Hello YouTube, welcome to a quick video where I'll be comparing my trusty old M1 MacBook Air to the brand new M3 Air in this outdoor where it belongs to. We'll dive deep into whether 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage is enough for my needs and how the speed of the drive impacts my daily workflow. What's the deal with swap memory usage? Do I need to upgrade my current M1 Air? I'll cover all this and more. So stick around for this valuable insights on real world usage. Plus, I'll let you know who should consider upgrading for the MacBook Pro. So let's get started. First, let's compare the M1 Air to the M3 Air. Apple struck with this iconic wedge shaped design from its introduction in 2008 until the M1 Air in 2020. Two years later, we saw a complete redesign featuring flat edges, thin bezels and of course the notch, which houses a better 1080p camera and a slightly brighter 500 nits display. However, the bezels on the Pro are even thinner. Overall, the Pro is a chunky boy with the purpose, which we shall see later in this video. Again, with the new redesign, we welcome back the MagSafe charging port. But if you prefer to go USB Type-C everything, the M3 Air supports that for charging too. You'll also get a full-sized function row keys and a brand new midnight color option, which is more fingerprint resistant on the new MacBook Air, the M3 Air. Now, let me show you a quick chart comparing what all the differences you are getting like if you are upgrading from M1 to the M3 or even the M2 Air. So pause this video if you want to have a closer look at this. First, let's do some boring benchmarks. Watch this if you really want to upgrade from the M1 Air to M3. Else, you can skip to the conclusion part. Starting with Geekbench CPU test on both the laptops. The M3 scores 3030 versus 2375 in single core and 12085 versus 8777 in multi core. So that's a 28% increase in single core performance and a 38% increase in the multi core performance. When it comes to graphics, the M3 scores 25840 versus 2862 in OpenCL. So that's a 24% increase in graphics performance. And note that the M1 here is a full unbent chip versus the bent M3 chip. Also, you can notice the brightness difference here. When it comes to the disk speed test, the base M2 was criticized for having a slower SSD, but Apple has addressed this with the M3 Air. However, the 256GB disk in the M3 is still slower than the 512GB on the M1, especially in write speeds, which reach up to 3000MB per second compared to 2000MB, which is a 33% decrease. But with the M3, we have dynamic caching, which significantly reduces the swap memory or the RAM usage. Finally, Let's test Cinebench for some sustained performance comparison. Here, the M1 scored 6,555 points, which is higher than the M3's 5,035 by around 23% decrease in performance, despite having eight cores on both the laptops. However, you'll notice the M3 doesn't use swap memory at all, and it, it has a better memory utilization, as you can notice. For single core performance, the M1 scores 1297 points versus 1898 on the M3, showcasing a strong 46% increase in single core performance. This is beneficial for the task like web browsing and office work. Let's talk about my overall experience with the M1 MacBook Air. If you are using your laptop for web browsing, email, watching shows, web application coding or general office work, the base M1 Air is still a great option and it's available online for around 70,000 Indian rupees, which is approximately 850 US dollars. If possible, try to get the 512 gigabyte version so you don't have to upgrade soon. 
so this is for someone who has a windows machine or a older intel macbook air now consider the m2 air if you prefer the newer design and don't want to feel left out like i mean like uh, you are using a older model as soon after the purchase beyond the design there is no compelling reason to choose the m2 over the m1 or the m3 but you get a 512 gigabyte m2 air for the same price as a 256 gigabyte m3 air so which is around 1 1.5 lakh which is approximately 1200 us dollars which is another reason to consider it so now coming to the latest and greatest m3 air it's not really for those who already own a m2 or even the m1 air however if you have the base model with you the 8 gigabyte ram and 256 gigabyte storage option one and you find that your workflow sometimes bottlenecks the system so you are, you are planning on to getting a newer machine or you want to upgrade the ram or ssd which is not possible with the latest uh, macbooks so then that is where the m3 air with 16 gigabytes of ram and 512 gigabytes of ssd comes up as a solid upgrade for 1.4 lakhs or approximately 1700 us dollars so it's ideal for those who prioritize portability over sustained performance so if you are someone who is looking for a thin and light laptop and you want to have the performance so the 16 gigabyte ram option with 512 gigabyte ssd m3 air is the way to go but there is a catch here generally in tech we should always upgrade when we need to so that is the rule so you can't keep on waiting for the next upgrade which should anyhow be better than the previous one but with apple recently unveiling their m4 chip in the ipad pro which is a considerable leap in performance and efficiency with the new 3 nanometer process it might be worth waiting until 2025 especially if you are having the m series of the macbooks if you're not in the verge of upgrading so you can wait for that so finally who should go for the pro if your work demands sustained performance such as photo or video editing animation graphics designing modeling game production or even the newer things with the ai like running your uh, local llms and your uh, training models or all the things that require the higher graphics performance or the cpu performance or the sustained workloads which you run for hours together or in short if you are making money out of your macbooks then go for the m3 pro macbook pro that's the way to go so for 1.8 lakhs or approximately 2200 us dollars you are getting the base 18 gigabytes of ram and 512 gigabyte storage configuration which is fine so note that there is also a 8 gigabyte regular m3 macbook pro so it's not the pro chip one the regular m3 chip one which is mainly for those who want a mini led display and nothing much else so that's for them so real professionals who make money out of their macbooks should opt for the m3 pro chip macbook pro and those with even more demanding workflows can go for the max dot m3 max chip and you know who you are so that's all i had in this video thank you for watching consider subscribing if you made it to the end of the video and peace